I've been a garbage man for 15 years. I've seen some strange things. Written by Super Brook. I'm a sanitation specialist for the city I live in. It's mostly just a fancy name for garbage man. I guess the city tries to give us some pride with a more formal title. To be honest, I don't really give a crap whether people call me a trash pickup or a garbage worker. It all means the same in the end. I ride on the back of garbage trucks all day and I pick up people's trash for a living. Most of the time it's a pretty easy job with early but long hours. I don't have a family at home, not even pets, so it works out for me. It's not exactly my dream job, but it's humble work and it helps keep me out of trouble. I've been doing this for about 15 years or so now, and you wouldn't believe the amount of insane things I find in people's trash. I have so many stories, and most people don't believe me when I tell them. So I figured I'd share them here. There seems to be a lot of crazy things happening on this page, which is fine with me. It ain't no different than what I deal with every day. Here are a few incidents I think you all will be interested in. So every morning at exactly 7.23 a.m., there's a man who watches us from his window as we pick up his trash. Tom, the guy who drives the truck while I load the garbage bags, pulls around at 7.20, Just exactly as I start moving his trash bins, I see a curtain move from the window. He's always hunkered down and hidden. We can only see him from his eyes up to the top of his head. While this may not seem strange to most of you, it's creepy for Tom and me. I know it's common for people to watch the garbage truck from the safety of their own homes, But this dude hides himself like he doesn't want to be caught. He watches us from the time we get there until the time that we leave. His bright, wide eyes following my every move. That's the one thing that sends chills down my spine every week when we pick up his trash. His eyes are always so painfully wide open and bulging like they'll pop out at any minute. He has these deep, dark circles under his eyes like he hasn't slept in months. His skin is sunken and ghostly pale. I've always been too creeped out by him watching me to go and check on the guy, so I usually just let it be. Another thing is once, Tom couldn't come to work because he was down with the flu. The city couldn't find someone to cover his shift, so I had to go it alone. That day took double the time because I had to drive and load the trash. Most days, I get off around 5 p.m., but this day, I was out until after 8. I remember it was late fall when this happened. I had just finished the last of my schedule and was driving back to City Hall to pick up my car when there was something standing in the middle of the road. Now, the way our trash pickup schedule works is we start in town and make our way into the deep country towards the end of the day. I know it really doesn't make sense, but Tom has been driving the truck long before I started work with the city, so I just follow along with what he wants. So, I was just following the usual schedule that day, albeit it was later. It was almost completely dark outside, thanks to daylight savings time ending, unfortunately. And there I was, in the middle of nowhere, in an old garbage truck with someone standing in the road. Except, it wasn't really a someone. It was more like a... a thing... I slammed on my brakes to avoid hitting it before I was able to get a good look at it. The thing was tall. I'm talking seven feet or taller. It was completely stark white and naked. No clothes, nothing. It really didn't have a face either. It was just a vertical slash through the center of where its face should have been. 
Its arms were so long it dragged its fingers on the blacktop. I was so in shock that it took me a solid moment for me to notice the red liquid seeping from the bottoms of its feet. Was it blood or something else? All I know is I didn't stick around long enough to find out. I swerved to the right and slammed my foot on the gas pedal and got the hell out of Dodge. Whatever that thing was, I wasn't going to take my chances. As I flew out of there, driving at at least 80 on the back roads, I heard this ear-piercing screech from behind me. It didn't sound like anything that would have come from an animal, so I figured that it came from the creature that I saw. It sounded like it was in pain. The next day, I told Tom all about it and saw the realization flash in his eyes. One second, he was frozen with fear, and the next, he acted like I was crazy. He said that I was seeing things. I didn't press the issue, seeing his reaction, and we went on about our day. The next story might be a little bit more on the tame side, but it's definitely still creepy. But less so than the other stories that I have. One time, Tom let me drive our regular route for practice, just in case he missed a day or something. This was when I had first started working with the city, so I was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to learn. Tom rode on the back of the truck, and as we made a stop, he would load the trash. Except one time we ran into a problem. There's an old woman named Mrs. Cleary who we pick up the trash for in the middle of our route. She usually just has one bag, but this time she didn't have any. The first time we saw this, we just figured that she didn't have any trash for the week and went on with our schedule. The next week, there still wasn't any trash. At this point, Tom and I were getting pretty worried. We went on ahead to our next house, but I called Mrs. Cleary when we stopped. She answered, but something seemed off. I let her know that there hadn't been any trash pickup at her house for two straight weeks, and we were worried that something might be wrong. Right off the bat, she seemed super confused. She told me she was setting her trash out like normal and someone was coming to get it because it was gone only a few minutes after she set it outside on the curb. I thought that this was strange, so Tom and I took a detour back to Mrs. Cleary's house. When we knocked on her door, she let us in and offered us a drink and some cookies like any grandmother would do. We declined her offer because we couldn't stay that long and explained to her that we weren't the ones who were collecting her trash. Luckily, Mrs. Cleary had her son set up a ring doorbell a few weeks ago because she noticed her hydrangeas were being destroyed by rodents and she wanted to catch them. She hadn't looked at the footage since her son installed the cameras, but when we all huddled together on the couch, we saw exactly what was happening. As soon as Mrs. Cleary shut her front door from taking out the trash, someone would crawl out of the utility building she had outside. He was a small man. He had wild hair and tattered clothes. He was skinny and short, and he twitched when he walked. He made it to the curb where the trash bag was and hauled it over his shoulder. On wobbly legs, he wadded back to the utility building with the trash in tow and shut the door behind him. There was definitely a squatter living in Mrs. Cleary's building. I called the police while Tom consoled Mrs. Cleary. They arrived shortly after and arrested the man. Turns out that he was just some homeless dude who was sleeping in her building and eating scraps from her trash. The police also found hydrangeas lying all around a makeshift bed the squatter had put together. Mrs. Cleary always kept a lock on her building after that. Well, I'll leave you with one last story, but I do have plenty more. When Tom and I were finished with our shift one time, and we were dumping our truck in the landfill, a thick black sludge fell out on top of the pile. 
At first, we thought that it was the buildup of gunk and grime that accumulates in the back of the truck. But the more that we looked at it, the more we realized the blob was moving. First, we noticed the smell. It was pungent, like a skunk rotting on the side of the road. If I could use one word to describe the smell, it would be death. Unequivocally, death. As the smell grew stronger, the sludge would move more and more with such fervor that we were sure that the thing was going to burst. Except it didn't. One minute it was wriggling and squirming, and the next minute it went still. Tom and I waited for a moment, looking at each other with wide eyes, a silent WTF passing between us. That's when we heard it. A loud popping noise, like someone opening a champagne bottle. We look back quickly at the blob to see that it's no longer a mass of thick black sludge. In its place laid a boy. A human boy. Pale and naked. He lay there shivering and whimpering like a puppy abandoned on the side of the road. Tom, in his deep, gruff voice, just sighed and said, F this, bro, I'm out. He walked away, leaving me to investigate what in the actual world I was looking at. Should I have called the police? Should I have called Child Protective Services? Maybe. But you know what I did instead? I reached my hand out to touch the boy slowly. I needed to get him help somehow, but... Just when my fingertips almost grazed his shoulder, he shot up on all fours. He glared at me with frightened eyes, his mouth hanging open. I jumped back, bracing myself for a possible attack. The boy backed away, scooting on his hands and knees, growling at me like a dog that hadn't eaten in days. It's coming, he said in a throated whisper as he continued to back away. I continued to watch in awe until he twisted his body in what seemed like the most painful way until he was standing upright. The boy gave me one last look in all of his nude glory and then took off running towards the woods. I didn't know what he meant. I didn't know what was coming. But what I did know is that I needed to get out of there. I ran like my life depended on it, and I made it back to my car in record time. I peeled out of the parking lot a lot faster than Jeff Gordon during the Daytona 500, afraid to look back in my rearview mirror. I drove at least 20 miles over the speed limit all the way home. I double-checked my locks once I was inside my house, and I stayed up all night, worried that something was coming for me but it never did. To this day, I'm not really sure what the boy-slash-sludge monster meant, and I don't really want to find out. If you're interested in hearing more stories about my job as a garbage man, I've got plenty more. My life may be a monotonous string of collecting trash, but at least I never get bored.